My proudest accomplishment uh, among the ones I've mentioned was the authorship of the Declaration of Independence, where I was able to pen that all men are created equal. All men are created equal. That is correct, madam. What about the women? Well, them too, yes. If you meant to say that all men and women are created equal, why did you not just write all men and women are created equal? I believe we've stumbled into the first conversation topic already. Perhaps. And we, we have, have agreed that we will each have a minute. Would you like to speak on the subject uh, that we have already broached? All men are created equal first, or would you like me to? Why don't you start, and I'll see no. where we go from here. Well, then one minute, I should turn that. This idea that all men are created equal goes back 2,000 years to Cicero. He's the first one to come up, at least in my studies, with the idea of natural law. Natural law means that based on the nature of a species, there are certain behaviors and traits that define it as a species. Hence, it refers to the entire species of humanity. Now, going through 2,000 years of philosophy in 10 seconds, when we came ac across John Locke, he decided that natural law also meant that we can decide as a people, as a species, what our government is. Later on, Francis Hutchinson decided that the very definition of natural law for humans, the, the hum what is human nature, is that we all have the capacity to love and be loved and deserve respect based on that. Francis Hutchison was the basis of my use of the term all men are created equal in the Declaration of Independence, hence the entire species of humanity was included. As long as we were creating a new nation, oh, only one minute. Oh, dear, this is very... As we are discussing the formation of a new nation and the first time we would see the words United States of America in print, could you not have... Um, updated Mr. Locke and Mr. Hutchinson and Cicero, 2,000 years worth of male-dominated rhetoric to have included all men and women, or even all mankind. Wouldn't that have been nice? You see, when I was growing up, my parents did have an equality, but as Mr. Jefferson did say, when he would when his father married, his mother lost all rights to her property because under the laws of the time and under the laws which we continue to live, women who bring dower property to a marriage do not get to retain that property. That is what I wish we could have achieved with your new declaration, the rights to property ownership by the women for whom that property devolved within their family line and to be able to continue to use that property at their will through their marriage. I apologize, I went over time. After you pass 200 years of age, uh, the minutes really become almost incalculably small. They, they, they go by very quickly. All men are created equals. First of all, men means mankind. Uh, I think if I tried... You should have just said mankind. I might have been able to get away with that. All right. I might have been able to. I'm not sure. But all men are created equal is a phrase I was able to use that had precedent. And as a lawyer, you try to use the actual phrases uh, spe as specifically as possible. It's why lawyers use la Latin when they can. Some of them use it to show off, but the good ones use it because then you use that exact phrase that has been debated over the, over the ages. I remember when my son John Quincy was learning Latin. And John was away at Congress for so many years. And, uh, well, it was all to do for me, who'd never spoken anything but English and really had no proper training in that either, to stay one step ahead of the brilliant young John Quincy Adams to teach him Latin. Gre oh. I bit into your time. To teach him Latin and Greek and French and, oh, goodness, it was very difficult. Uh, uh, sorry, you reclaim some of your time there. All men are created equal, all mankind, all the human race created equal. Set aside the rhetoric for a moment. It does not say, and I did not mean, that everyone's treated as equals, as their human nature merits them. I would have been a fool to have said that, or I would have been lying. What I wrote then was true in so far as human nature is concerned, but obviously did not play out as far as our laws attempting to approximate a codification of that human nature. I believe your criticisms, Mrs. Adams, I cannot address, well, we're going to have to, regarding property in a moment, of, have levels of validity. But in 1776, it was all we could do to agree just on independence. If we had gone into these idealistic utopian goals, I think we would have fallen apart. But then again.